the official Retro Bowl Power Rankings are out, and I'm here to break them down and give you a look around the league as we hit the back stretch of the season. We'll speed through the lowest ranked teams, and when we get to the top 20, I'll recap the Houston Tampa game so we can keep up with our boys. But let's start with the bottom feeders of the league and make our way up. Make sure to argue with me in the comments and let me know who your favorite teams and players are. The worst three teams in the league shouldn't be discouraged. They all have young QBs with promise. Donovan Payne's team is filled with legends, but man, they are old and lacking weapons. Justin Prairie's best weapons are a big Ditka and a kick returner. The run game is their forte though. And Cotter Murray is so talented with a stud at wideout, but comes up short with his game day preparation. The next three teams should be actively trying to tank. There's not a lot to note about the next batch here, except Kansas City and Kermit Mahouse can't get the dubs that their offense deserves. Their D is weaker than Houston's, and Mahouse doesn't have the weapons on the outside that he's used to. The biggest faller here is Washington, mired in controversy with their owner, Ban Snyder. He's a scumbag, and their record is a fraud. Scary McLaren's a burner, though, and LeVar Ballington is still mouthing off while balling. The fastest riser is Jacksonville since the WTF trade. His pairing with Boat Portals has been volatile. Who could have guessed? And Abraham Cousins has really turned it on. In any given week, they can beat the best teams or lay an egg against a high school JV squad. All right, before we move on to the top 20 teams, let's get into the Houston Tampa game. And in week 13, it was an air show. Ryan Fitzwinston wasn't always on point, but Houston's corners still got smoked by Evan Michaels all day. Houston shut down the run for the most part, but Warwick's trying to show that he ain't done. That brings up a second down here. Fitzwinston fakes the handoff, and he's going deep to Michaels, and he lost him! He is in for six! Touchdown, Tampa Bay! Now, Fish, I appreciate a double team as much as the next guy, but a linebacker and a shitty corner on Evan Michaels ain't gonna work out. Ayapati was able to help when he shaded to that side, but Michaels pulled in some ridiculous grabs on his way to a dominating performance. He wasn't the only receiver that blew up on Sunday, though. And no, it wasn't Savage. Nick Leggett made his return from injury in a big way. It's a big third down here for Houston on their second drive. Garvin drops back, sends it to Leggett, and he dances around the DBs. There he My goes. Gosh. He spins and he's tackled. 30 big yards for Leggett. Garvin just puts some air underneath of it for Leggett, and he slips on his tutu as he looks graceful as hell getting past those DBs. The old man put on a clinic, reminding everyone that his glory days weren't that long ago. His young co-star on the outside had to deal with perennial pixel ball corner Rondé Styles, but still managed a couple nice catch and runs. Garvin looked precise on most of his throws and was only bothered by Tampa's strong front seven on a couple snaps. The Bucks' big boys did cause trouble for Houston's other rookie, but he still salvaged the day for his fantasy owners. Leggett keeps finding ways to get open on these play-action throws, but like I was saying, Fish, the only Harry Potter game they should be remaking is the Quidditch World Cup. We all heard you called it second and one here for Houston. Garvin's throwing, finds Locke for a touchdown! He hasn't had much success on the ground, but he gets it through the air here. The Bucks rotated their tandem of backs, Warwick finished in Mike Allstate, to minimal success. Warwick covered the ground and Allstate vultured a TD as usual. And even though both front sevens handled the run game, neither defense could buy a stop. And special teams ended up as the difference for Houston once again as Sims booted all three of his extra points cleanly and Tampa's Martin Automatica misfired on one of his. Houston sets up Ayapati too deep in the box to help on this deep throw to Michaels, and now they're on the goal line. Normally you'd see Mike Allstate here, but Warwick finished out as they throw the fade to Michaels for the touchdown. They should have known a throw was coming without the vulture on the field. Tampa with an opportunity to tie the game in the fourth. Automatica is wide right. It's no good. That's got to be embarrassing, given his name and all. Garvin and the boys drove the field in the fourth and kneeled it out for another close W. 
With Houston getting back to 500, let's take a look at where they fall in the top 20. Now these are the real playoff contenders, and the rankings are just begging keyboard warriors everywhere to start arguing in the comments. Tampa should be happy to still be in the conversation after the L on Sunday, but Pittsburgh and Dallas fans are gonna be crying for sure. Pittsburgh has got it rough in the AFC's strongest division. Their defense plays like they belong in the North, headlined by TJ Bulb and Joe Mean up front, but on offense, Nitsch Fuprisky ain't it, bro. They dealt a pick for him at the deadline, but they could have used it in the draft this year to get anyone better. Dallas may have just been atop their division, but they have the worst chemistry of any team, despite having a married couple at quarterback and tight end. That's Tony and Jason Nohomo. Their best wideout, CD's Nuts, has shown signs of jealousy, and Emmett Elliott doesn't get enough touches. Dion Prime and Trayvon Berries can make QBs pay for errant throws, but get torched when they aren't focused. Now here come our Houston boys, and I don't know if I should start bitching or thank my lucky stars for this ranking. I'll just say, I'm glad we are higher than the Cowgirls. And rounding out this group is Carolina. We've seen their offense bully the Texans with a superhero at QB, a savior lined up behind him, the strongest tight end in the league, and I see this squad beating up the weak NFC South. All right, I'll reveal the top half of the league after the break, and I swear that Thomas and I have never seen such bullshit before. Dad, can we go out and play catch? No. Dad, look at the picture I painted. No. Dad, we're out of milk. Can you please go mm, get some? Actually, yes. Introducing 0% milk. No, it's not skim. It's bioengineered for dads that want to give 0% effort. So go get the last gallon of milk you'll ever need. Of the Houston Roundup. Now on 107.4. The text. So you ready for this cap? Numbers 15 to 10, and I can't. I just can't. But let me start with Detroit, which I'm here for. Two of the greatest position players to ever lace up have a shot at the playoffs. Barry Slamders is doing it on the ground and Megatron is dominating the air. It helps that they added a Sun God St. Brown a couple years ago and got Jared Koff doing a respectable job. The defense is held up by Raiden Shadow Legendson, who's proven to be one of the strongest rookies in the most recent class. Now, I'm about ready to cancel my show over this next one because I must not know shit about football. Indy being ranked 14th. What am I missing? They are five and seven. Yeah, they started slow with Edge Taylor's injury. And yes, he's balling out. But bro, this is a joke. Next week is the perfect day for Houston to expose these frauds in prime time. I know, someone must be paying the schedule makers to get Houston this kind of national coverage and all, but I can't wait to get revenge on these bums. Next up is New England, and I'm inclined to believe someone ranked them here with a side of salt. Never count out Tom Goatsy. He doesn't have goat in his name for nothing. They did just fall to Buffalo at home, which makes me think they're gonna have to battle for a wild card spot though. Now fans of the defending champs Baltimore have gotta be livid with this ranking, but I think it's close to right. Mike Jackson is the most exciting player when healthy, but their front office refuses to invest in receivers. I love Heat Mandrews at tight end, and Baskin Dobbins is a great Robin for their Batman at QB, but it's such a basic offensive scheme, and I think defenses have caught up. Their defense is scary, though. Ray knifing through the middle, Terrell Sizzle eating quarterbacks, and Ed Wright making house calls when he gets his hands on the rock. And here at 11 is a weird one. Eight and five Tennessee. If these were my rankings, I'd put them at 32 without Hank Derrick. They're in shambles without him, dropping three straight. I expect them to keep falling and give Houston a chance to almost unbelievably win the division still. All right, top 10 time. The Giants just snuck into first place and I don't think they'll relinquish it now. Sellers at the deadline, they've surprised everyone as Eli Owens Tom has been dropping dimes since they got rid of WTF. 
Amani, it's not a tumor, has stepped up with Kenny Holiday, and their defense is anchored by a beastly front seven. Michael Strayteeth and Dexter Laboratory on the line, and LT with Kayvon Cookie Dough as backers are wreaking havoc in opponents' backfields. Seattle is hanging in the tough NFC West in large part to the Legion of Zoom. Rookie Tariq Fulin has been a great addition to the defensive backfield with Optimus Prime, Chancellor Palpatine, and E.T. Deuces. Quarterback Russ Cooks is on fire in the final year of his deal, and his backfield mate, Sean Skittles Mode, is a beast. Not to mention wide-out decaf meatcalf is a monster too, so they aren't lacking the weapons to make a run. Cleveland fans may feel snubbed by the 8th spot, but they lost the momentum from their 5-0 start after getting embarrassed by Cincinnati. Bernie Maybrook shows signs of stardom, but regresses every other week. Big Chubb provided stiff competition for the starting running back role and finally beat off hardened veteran Jif Brown for the job. Rookie wideout Cody Willis made a big splash early in the year, but has been blanketed since. Minnesota misses out on the top five, even with marquee victories over Denver and Green Bay. Kirk Siblings has two of the best wideouts to throw to between Gritty Jefferson and Randy Sauce, so they can definitely light it up. But they have a tendency to get lit up by lesser opponents too. John Manhandle talks a lot of trash for a defense that let Vegas drop 54 on them. And Buffalo fans are deservedly fuming after being left out of the top five. Josh Kelly is playing like an MVP most weeks, and Steven Burrows is one of the best targets in the league. Their defense is all or nothing, though. Bruce Bruce is dominant up front, but the trade that brought them former Texan Donnie Bonogu has equated to a whole lot of nothing. Stephon Kilmore is deadly when targeted, but teams know better than to throw his way. Now for the cream of the crop. Starting off the top five is Cincinnati, rattling off five straight dubs before this week's loss to the surging Giants. When they win, they go big. Boomer Burr and Chase Uno is the best duo in the league, bar none. Burr's second option, He Tiggins, is a huge target that would be a number one on most other teams. Richard Mixon had some off the field distractions involving something with a phone tap or whatever, but it hasn't kept him from being a top performer. Their defensive front is second only to the Giants with Atkins Diet and DJ Ryder holding down the middle. Number four is occupied by the defending NFC champs, the Hollywood Riots, formerly known as the Rams with their fresh team look, and they've dropped the most points in the league so far. Pops Warner has the problem of choosing to throw to Teacup, Brucey Holt, or running back Marshall Manley on every play. Poor guy. Manley lives up to his name being a dual threat back too. Their defense is thin, but it is home to two guys that can wreck games. Jalen Rampage limits your pass game to one side, and you better get it out quick because Arendale Dongle is coming for you. He leads the league in sacks and TFLs. Now, this team may sit at number three, and most fan bases would be happy with that. But Denver fans are raging! They have the best record in the league, and they beat one of the teams in front of them! John Emway announced that this is his final ride into the sunset, and he's doing it in style. The Denver offense is loaded with vet weapons like Touchdown Davis carrying the ball, Shannon Blunt catching passes down the middle, and Rod Stiff still making plays on the outside. The young guy Judge Judy has taken over as the number one target, though. The defense is solid with legends like Victor Bailey at corner and Von Killer off the edge. I really don't see how the guy that made these rankings can sleep at night after putting Green Bay at number two. So they must be riding Aaron Rister's dick. The pack have won four straight. And they are the deepest at wideout with three studs between Gumby Jennings, Donald Passenger, and Whitey Nelson. But an eight and four team at number two is crazy. Their defense can be good. I mean, Slay Matthews plays linebacker like a psychopath. And I just hope their D-lineman Putin doesn't take his KGB nickname too seriously and gets me taken out for this slander. And finally, it should be no surprise to see this team at number one. 
since Houston just fell to them a week ago. Five straight dubs with victories notched against some of the league's best squads. They split the season series with Hollywood just this week in a thriller that of course ended up with B-Hall acting a fool in the end zone. Fourth down, six seconds left. Springs gets hit by Dongle, but Hall makes the catch and he's free! Goal! Past the 20! He's past the 10! He ain't gonna make it! He jukes and dies for the score! Hall! At the last second! I didn't think the old fella still had it in him, but here we are every single time. He could do with a little more class though, Colt. My man, Hefe, your mom has his squad hitting on all cylinders. And make sure you check out my interview with him last week if you didn't already. I'm glad our agents could work out this time. You know, it's great to be here, Jake. You know, as the best looking rushable coach, <laughs> I'm a pretty busy guy. All right. If you want to vote for Pixel Bowl teams or player awards like MVP and Rookie of the Year, make sure you comment below or join my Discord. Lots of other ways to participate in the series in my server too. Plus, I gotta give a huge thank you to the members that have already joined. They provided tons of the highlights and names that you saw in this video. I know I haven't added all the folks that have helped, but these are some that really stood out. One quick note, I'm really sorry if I didn't use your highlights or name suggestions if you submitted them. There were just so many, and I couldn't use everything. Next week, those hicks from Indy are visiting Houston to get their asses handed to them in prime time. So make sure you watch every play of the game on RBTV2 with a special guest. All right, thank you for watching today on 107.4 The Tex.